Well, um, as you know, earlier today relieved uh, Donnie Granado, Jason Christie, and Matt Smith of their coaching duties, and I just want to say thank you to them for their their hard work, their dedication, their professionalism to this organization, and wish them the best of luck. Um, when it comes to Donnie in particular, I think he's an excellent coach, but an even better person. And I appreciate the relationship that we have and we've had over the years. I know he's made me a better general manager. I appreciate the conversations, him challenging me, and I've learned a lot from Donnie. And I can tell you that there's a lot of people in our locker room that games are in a much better place. And owe a lot to their development, to the help that Donnie gave them. And I guess the simplest way I, I think about this is when I, when I look at my own life and big things, small things, I always, I always think about um, leave it better than you found it. And I can tell you, there's no doubt in my mind that our locker room, um, our team, our organization is in a better place today than we were three and a half years ago when Donnie took over as head coach. And I'm very appreciative of that. As far as our team, I'm sure you'll get, you know, deeper, more definitive answers to questions you ask me, but just wasn't good enough. Um, in my opinion, we underperformed, we were inconsistent, and we need to be better. So go ahead and ask questions and uh, hope I can give you more insight there. Why was now the time to make a change, Kevin? Now, meaning today or just? At the end of this season, I know that you've spoken in the past about wanting to take emotion out of it yep. and to evaluate these sort of situations. Why did you ultimately come to this decision at the end of the season? I thought it was the right thing for us to take the next step. Um, I certainly wanted to give this every single opportunity to succeed and to work. And in many ways, as I mentioned, we took a lot of positive steps um, over the years, but there were times where we were creeping back in it and we were just getting on the edge of the playoffs and um, getting back in that fight and we just weren't able to win that next game or get ourselves to the next spot. But I wanted to give our team every chance to do that. Um, and that's why, you know, I think in general, I'm patient. Um, I go through my own process um, when evaluating and making decisions like this or any decision really. But, um, you know, I certainly wanted to make sure I, I did that and um, here we are today. The fact that, that this move came first less than 12 hours after you came to Ohio State, does it indicate that you had made your mind up to a, a large degree before last night's game was over? Yeah. Um, like I said, I, I certainly wanted to give our team every chance to get ourselves um, to where I thought we could be, which was you know into a playoff spot. Um, and it didn't happen, but um, I think it's fair to say that um, I didn't make this decision on the plane last night. Did you give any consideration to making this move during the season? Uh, get that bump from the new coach? I, I never felt it was the right time. Um, I think there's, look, we, like I said, we just flat out weren't good enough this year and we underperformed and that's um, not just on the coaching's. You know, that's on the players, too, and that's on me. And I want to make sure you guys understand that. When, when I make decisions like this, and this was my decision, I certainly talk to people that I'm close with and that I work with, and I certainly spent a lot of time recently talking to Terry Pagula about this, but this was my decision. And I felt this is what I need to do and we need to do as an organization to take the next step. But... Um, you know, you think about things during the year, you balance out um, where are you at, what's the natural kind of evolution of our team um, and the ups and downs you go through. And um, I didn't feel that um, making a coaching change or was the right thing to do during the season or I would have done it, period. And um, I just feel that we, we left we left some things on the table this year. We didn't uh, we didn't perform to expectations, and we have to be better. Yeah, what, was your, what was your uh, frustration level with some of the repetitive things we saw this year when you were dealing with Don, talking to Don, things like first periods and the power play, and 
you know, not getting over the hump in a big game. I mean, just how much did that bother you about this team's development that there were several qualities that just lasted almost all season? Yeah, I mean, you touched on some of the things that, you know, you go through and you think about um, when you make decisions like this. I can promise you we could be here for an hour and you can keep asking questions about Donnie and you never hear me say a bad thing about Donnie Gordano. I think he's an excellent coach and I, I have so much respect for him. But um, yeah, there were areas where you just weren't good enough and those were conversations that you know, I'm having on a daily basis with coaching staff, with players, um, and you touched on a few of them. I don't think we, we performed consistently enough up to our expectation of what I have. And I don't think we were competing at a high enough level game in and game out. I don't think we were, um, our standard needs to be higher, period. And we need to start games better for sure. But I think it's too simple to say, um, hey, if we started better, you know, we'd be in a higher stance. I think there's just, there's a lot more to talk about with that, but that's, you know, that's definitely one of them. And we need to play better at home. Um, and we just need to be better across the board. You'll probably hear me sick of saying that, but it's just the truth. It wasn't good enough. Yeah, uh, geez. I mean, these are tough. I, I think um, any time you are in my position, um, you you want to make sure you're you're level headed. You're doing what is best for the organization above all else. My job is to put this organization in the best possible place I can, and. That means making hard decisions. Sometimes that's roster decisions. Sometimes that's trading players, signing players, whatever that might be. These are these are decisions you make. Um, they're not easy. And a decision like this, of course, um, my style of leadership is to um, be very hands-on, to get to know the people that I work with at a, at a very um, personal level. Um, and that's that's you know Donnie and the coaching staff. That's the equipment managers. That's the players. You know, I, you guys know I've had players over my house for dinner. And that's because I want to get to know them. I want to, I want to be able to understand what, what they're all about and they need to, to know who I, what I'm all about. Um, so that doesn't mean you don't make hard decisions. You make hard decisions if you think it's right. And this is the decision I made that I thought was the best thing for the Buffalo Sabres. And, um, you know, that'll be the message that I talk to the team about tomorrow. Kevin, I made talk about your comment about like, your, your, the standard needing to be higher and kind of as a follow to what Mike had said we had heard things about Don would say the lack of compete, um, dealing with pressure, and for a roster, yeah, it's young, but it's got some experience now too. Was that reflective of his ability to reach them on a consistent basis, and is that also reflective of maybe some issues with some of the players you have on the roster? Yeah, I mean, you're you, look. Um, you don't get to the National Hockey League without handling pressure. That is the most ridiculous thing I could ever hear someone say and that ah, guys can't handle pressure. It's what you do for a living. That's how you get here. You start getting scouted as a, as a professional athlete. You start getting scouted when you're 14, 15, 16 years old. So that's, that's nonsense. Um, we just didn't play well enough, period. We did not play well enough. From day one of training camp, I don't think we – had our standard high enough, our expectations inside the room need, need to be raised and there needs to be accountability across the board. And that starts with me. I take responsibility for this. First and foremost, I want all of you to know that I'm, I'm up here talking about Donnie and I'm talking about the coaching staff and where I need to be better, but I need to be better. It's on me. It's on the leader and I will be. But um, I take that very seriously and I look at every part of this organization and um, – Feel very, feel very strongly that if, if there's a trust in relationships and how you deal with each other, then you can challenge each other. And I do believe we have that. And we have the people in the room that can handle that. Um, so that'll be, the, that'll be something that we definitely dig into as we move forward here. Kevin, last year, you guys mentioned, or you mentioned that you felt the window was open for the team to win a Stanley Cup. Obviously, a disappointing season that's led you to where you are now looking for another head coach. Do you still... Would you say you feel confident in that statement right now? Well, more than ever. Yeah, I mean, first of all, I 
I would say that. I don't know when I said the windows open. Maybe it was the start of the year. It was the end of last year, whatever it was. I would say it again. Absolutely not a doubt in my mind. What I mean by a window opening is I mean that we have a team that's competitive enough to be right there fighting in the playoffs um, and giving ourselves a chance. So, um, you know, and the other thing, just so you all know that I know you guys have challenging jobs and you, I can come in here and do press conferences and give you, be annoyed or give you one word answers and walk out. But I'm trying to give all of you and I'm trying to give our fans honesty and truth. And you know, there's certain things I'm not going to talk about or I can't talk about, but honestly, I want you guys and our fans to understand exactly what's going on with this organization. And I meant the words I said, and, I'm, and I would say it again now. I believe we I have a talented group of players that now we need to take the next step, um, which is obviously getting in the playoffs and going from there. Yeah, but you're looking all this on, on yourself uh, as you did. How much do you, I'm not sure second guess is the word, but when it comes to go, not filling Jack Quinn's spot, um, when it comes to carrying three goalies, when it comes from maybe not making an extra move in the offseason, perhaps, do you second guess that? And how much does that also fall on you for putting the team together? Well, it, it all falls on me. I mean, I'll take responsibility for everything. And we're not in the playoffs, so we didn't, it didn't work. didn't succeed. Um, end of story. And that's on me. Now, it's, it's natural for me in my process to go back over decisions we make and postmortem to some extent of saying, okay, where did we do th some things well? Where did we not? Um, what could we have done different? Now that's different than um, second guessing or, you know, should have, would have, could. I mean, if you could have tell me here on April 16th that you knew Jack Quinn was going to have another significant injury, well, wow, it's pretty sharp for you, John. I don't know if you could have said that. Um, did we talk about in the summer when he had his injury every possible scenario that we had in front of us of filling that, that role? Yes. Um, did we like the cost acquisition? Did we like the potential term of contracts? Did we like the UFA number that it might have been? No, or we would have made the move. And also didn't have a crystal ball to see that he would have another pretty significant injury. So yeah, you can look back on it now and say, hey, that was an area that we could have done something, but I think we, we went through the process and made the decision we made. And um, I also think that no more talk about this being a young team, you know, like uh, uh, Zach Benson stepped into the, a pretty important role this year that um, was tremendous. And he's now he's a young player. Um, but we have a group of younger players that are experienced now, and now it's time to move forward. What, in your opinion, was the assistance that weren't referenced this morning? Uh, yep. Um, yeah, you can ask me about any of them, but um, what you saw in the, I, mean, didn't, I don't know exactly what was written in the press release, but um, the three names I mentioned is, is who I uh, spoke with this morning. Do you envision times following those people who are being retained staying in their same roles? No, yeah, yes and no. Um, the people that were retained on the coaching staff um, were retained for a reason, but um, you know, I think this will be a very uh, important conversation with the next head coach and how roles and responsibilities will be um, divided up. I mean, you guys know coaches, you know, some maybe more focused on the D or forwards or systems or power play, penalty kill, special teams, all that stuff, goaltending, obviously. So that's something that'll be um, worked through with the next head coach. I have very, um, in my mind, very clear direction of what I see and what I want to have happen. Um, but those conversations will be happening. What qualities does this team need in a head coach to take that next step that you referred to? Experience. Um, I, I want the next head coach to be someone that um, has experience and can can push this group um, to the next level and win hockey games. And I think that's that's I have it in my mind exactly what I'm looking for, and that'll be um, starting today. Um, coaching experience sorry to interrupt you that's that's yes I mean I would like in my mind as I have clearly thought about this you know knowing that you know where we are now um and th that those conversations will happen starting this afternoon I'm going to move forward as quickly as possible because I have a very clear 
um, direction in my mind of, of where we're going to go. But um, previous NHL head coaching experience, pedigree um, is important. Kevin, we, since the owner hasn't spoken to us in four years, how would you characterize his mood and how serious a mandate has he given you and your staff and everyone in this organization about making the playoffs next year and ending the longest drought in the history of the league? Mm, covered a lot on that question. Um, Mike, I get asked this every time I do a press conference. Terry Pugula is, in, is engaged as he's ever been. I was hired by the Buffalo Sabres the year before the Pagulas bought the team. So I've been here for a while and obviously in different roles in different areas um, within organizations. Terry Pagula um, watches closely, talks to me every day, has strong opinions on what he sees, and we have great conversations. Do not take the lack of necessarily you seeing him in the press box as a sign of anything. He is dealing with personal matters. Okay, that's important to know. He is engaged. He wants this team to win. He wants to have success, and he's willing to do whatever it takes to win. And that has never changed from the moment I've met Terry Pagula. He has given me every possible resource that, I, that he has to help this team and help this city, by the way. And I can't say enough about the dedication that he's continued to show this organization, this city, the players, um, and that's not changing. And the last part of your question is, are the expectations to make the playoffs? Absolutely. Period. Who will be involved in Sorry? Who will be involved in Well, I mean, you know, like you know my style enough to know that I'm, nothing happens in a vacuum. Um, clearly, this will be my final decision, um, like I said earlier, but Terry Pagula will be absolutely um, someone that I'm leaning on through this process. Uh, obviously, Jason Kermanos, Mark Jakubowski um, are people that are in the management team that I talk to. Um, you know, I've done coaching searches and hiring coaches before. I've, I did it in the American League um, when we hired Seth Appert a few years ago. I did it, um, obviously, when Donnie became coach um, that summer when he was interim. I interviewed a lot of different people and had multiple people in the room at different times. So I've done this before, um, but yeah, though it'll be, it'll be a process, but I can't stress enough, Matt, that um, my mind is very um, crystal clear on what I'm looking for, and we'll move as quickly as possible to get it done. Go ahead, Matt, let Matt finish it, go ahead. What can you tell us about what you sense the interest is in this job, just you know, given where this current Well, it's been a few hours, um, and my phone has been on do not disturb. But when I, uh, when I looked right before the press conference, I had a lot of voicemails. Um, I think this is a – there's a couple things I can tell you about this organization. Um, I think it's viewed now as, a, as, a, as an opportunity because there is a lot of talent. Um, and I truly believe, and I do believe others see this as well, that we're right on the cusp of taking the next step. And if you're a, if you're a head coach and you're competitive and experienced, that's something to get excited about. And this is a hockey city. People that, people that love the game and love the feeling of, of – coming into a rink and feeling the expectations of fans and pressure. You want to be in a city like Buffalo. So no doubt that this is going to be an attractive job. Okay, just, just to double check, you talk about the pedigree and the kind of guys you want having experience. You're really probably not going to wait for somebody, right? Because you want to hire a coach in a relatively short order. Is that, would that be accurate? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, waiting just to see what happens over the summer, you mean? Like, an, guys yeah, playoffs. yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I'm going to move. I mean, look, we're not going to ever rush in anything and not going to do something. There's no artificial timeline. But what I can tell you is I have a plan. And if if the plan moves quickly, even better. Um, I think that's important. But it won't. We wouldn't do something that we don't think makes sense just to just to do it fast. Yeah, well, you, uh, you got a clear idea of what you're looking for. And I, I guess I ask this not only now that you're experienced as a GM, but 
GM, but as a guy who won a Stanley Cup, you know, on the ice. Um, I'll be trying to be as open-ended about this as possible, but like the combination of maybe an old school, hold the feet to the fire accountability type approach and, uh, you know, the ability to communicate and deal with the modern player. That's a delicate balance in, in coaching these days. What's your view of that and how does it fit within what you're looking for? Yeah, you nailed it. I think that is um, it's exactly where I believe our team is, you know, in terms of we, we are craving accountability um, structure and that um, our team's now mentally, in my opinion, ready for that, mature enough to handle that push. Um, but make no mistake that it's a lot different than it was, you know, a long time ago where you could just um, really, really, you know, slam the door and kick garbage cans and stuff like that. It's just it's different. So there has to be a blend. You have to be able to um, communicate. You have to be able to more than ever um, one-on-one -on -one with players articulate exactly what is a coach, exactly what the expectations are um, when you step on that ice, but also build a relationship. And the players now, and I think this has happened over the last few years, they, they want a relationship. You know, I don't want to sound old, but when I, you know, when I first came in the NHL, like, you were scared of the coach. You didn't want to talk to him. And now, you know, there's a true relationship. And that's the way it should be, by the way. I, I love it. Um, but that's what has to happen so that the next the next coach we get um you said it well that's that's something that i think will be critically important at the top of the list for me given what you said previously about roster management and the moves you did make this year how does that change your philosophy of this isn't a young team anymore but are you still seeking a veteran addition this summer yeah i think you want, i want to be a, a little careful like this is just about winning you know winning and if there's players in the off season um, that we think will help, uh, 22, 32, 42, <laughs> we want players that are going to help us win. And I'm not afraid. I know we're the youngest team in the league. I understand that, and that's real, and that's part of where I do think the inconsistency and the ups and downs at times have happened. But you know, we have now players that have experience in this league and have been through the league a few times. Um, so that's no more needs to be talked about. So yeah, it's nice to have players that have been, you, you know, been around a little bit, but it's, it's, to me, it's more about finding the fits that um, help us, help us win. And we're going to do every, every single decision we make um, from the time I walk out of this room until training camp is going to be with that in mind. How do we help our team get better? Yeah, I, I, yes. Yes. I mean, big picture, Paul. Yes. Um, that can be such a, it's such a big answer, Paul, because sometimes being really hard to play against is just being extremely fast and attacking teams. And you just got teams on their heels and you're like, Whoa, th this team is hard to play against. And then there's the hard to play against of like, man, it's miserable. Every time I touch the puck, I got a guy in my face and I got no time and space. And I think we need to be both. Um, I do think at the bottom six of our lineup, our forward group, we can have a little more, um, be a little more abrasive, a little more identity, um, and, you know, that's something that I've talked about with you guys before that we've accumulated talent and sometimes now it's, it's, it's figuring out the, the ways your lines kind of flow together and maybe a little bit more of identity on a line, um, lower, lower in your forward group. So, um, but I guess overall answer to your question, yes, we want to be harder to play against and, um, you know, compete harder, more physicality. Um, I want this building to be really, really hard to come into. I, it's, it, you got to win and you got to win at home. Um, you want to be a playoff team. You need to be a good home team. And this building, I know it's capable of be of rocking and I know it's capable of having a true home ice advantage. Um, and I can't wait for that to happen, but we have to earn it on our side and I can't wait for the, the fans to embrace it and, and help us there. And when, when that, in that sense, did you agree, because you're part of, in, part of the internal discussions when it came to the philosophical switch to focus a little bit more on defense that kind of it neutered that high-flying team. Um, did you agree or did it go too far and did it provide this team some hesitancy in, in that sense? Yeah, I think I want to clear one thing up. The system did not change. 
did not change. Our system did not change. I want to say one more time, our system did not change. What changed was at times a little bit of the focus um, starting in training camp of making sure cleaning up some things defensively, but there was no systematic change. Okay, so I will admit in terms of as a former player, sometimes if you're thinking one way, there could cause hesitancy and maybe it slows you down just that half step or whatever it is. So that can it can look like that. But there was not a philosophical change. There was not um, some some number crunching in the summer that said, okay, um, we need to really change how we play. It just, um, sometimes a point of emphasis, in, and it can be well-intended, um, just changes maybe the dynamic of the team a little bit. But I do want it to be really clear, um, there was not a system change. But what happened? Yeah. What happened? Which, which part? Well, I mean, you, you, you went from a high-flying, high-scoring offensive team to a team that couldn't score. Yeah, I thought, we were, I thought we were caught in the middle, Mike. Like, Sometimes it's easier up top to see it, you know, where you guys sit and I sit, um, than it is being behind the bench, you know, as a coach, because it's just you're right there. Sometimes sitting up top, you can really see. It. I felt oftentimes this year we were caught in the middle, and I think being caught in the middle is the worst spot you can be. And what I mean by that is, you're not a extremely offensive attacking team. You're not a really defensive team. You're kind of in the middle, and that's tough. And that's what I saw: a little hesitancy. Um, and we need to fix it. And, you know, and I will say just, just philosophically, I think that you can argue almost any system you play can work. You've seen teams that are very offensive, you've seen teams that are, you go back all the way to the Jersey days where they're trapping and sometimes in the middle, it can work, but everybody has to be completely dialed into it and on board and feeding and reading off each other, um, for the system to work. And I think that there was just some just a little bit this year of just guys just off a little. Um, and that's all it takes in this league. Um, how, do you feel about your, how do you feel about your core at this point? There were a lot of long-term contracts handed out <coughs> and a lot of regression this year among those individual players. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think a couple things. One, you know, I, I, I think you got to be a little careful with the word regression. And um, if you take a step back and you look at everything, there was some great progress this year from – goaltending and what UPL did and um, JJ Paterka and just, you know, so there was, there's some of that. And then regression wise, yeah, there, there's even guys that are a little more experienced in their career. You're coming off a career year. It's, it's, it's challenging to can duplicate that. So the challenge that we had was that we had a number of players kind of fall off and regress. And now the question is, you know, why? Um, and that's, you know, what I've touched on a little bit and we'll fix it. But in terms of our core, believe in these guys. Um, I completely trust that this is a group of people that will get this right, that in, want to make this team great and want to be here in Buffalo and believe in what we're doing um, and hold themselves accountable. You know, there's, there's um, many conversations through the years of some of the guys that you're probably referencing in our core that felt like they're letting, you know, letting the team down, letting the city down. And you'd rather have that because they care. But I have no no concern that these guys are not going to be, you know, excellent players for us moving forward. Um, so, you know, big picture our core, excited and believe that, uh, you know, they're going to take a step and they'll do it now. Not to, ask you to tell us what you're going to say to the players specifically beforehand, but just generally, what message do you want to get across to them after making this change, just given the way the seasons went and the concerns that you've said? Yeah, time is now, Lance. You know, like, I didn't, I didn't just, I think coming into this year, um, there was still, okay, where do we fit within the league and where are we, some of our players, even in terms of like, um, where do I fit in the lineup and what is and what am I going to be like? It's, it's go time. It is time to perform um, on an individual level and as a team level. And we have to be better. And the message, you know, like, again, not to get into specifics of what I'm going to say, but it'll be a challenge to them. And, and, and there'll be and part of what I want to help get across to them is when you win, you think back on certain snapshots and certain Oh, remember we won that game in overtime and certain big games. But really, really what you do is you think about the sacrifice and 
the commitment and the work ethic and the grind in a practice when you're exhausted and you're, you got off the plane at three in the morning and then you push hard and then you get on the bike after. And that's what you remember and looking around the locker room and looking guys next to you in the eye and saying, these are the guys that I want to go battle with. That's what you remember when you win. And I want our guys to have that feeling because I know we have the character in that locker room and now we have to go earn it and not to get caught up in anything other than showing up every day and challenging yourself to be better than you were yesterday, to be accountable to each other, to be accountable to yourself. Like that is, that's the magic. Um, and I want them to take that into the summer because, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say these things, you know, four years ago, three years ago, two years ago, because I didn't, I knew we were still evolving. Now I, I, I know we're right there. We're on the cusp and it's going to be up to us. It's going to be hard. Um, but that's the best part. And that'll be the message. Uh, yeah, you know, he looks like significant enough that he would probably have to miss the world championships. Um, yeah, he was pretty disappointed after the game. I know he's excited to go to the worlds. Um, so I uh, was getting an MRI actually I think he's doing it maybe right now. Um, but it, uh, nothing that'll in any way affect him next year or in the summer training, but he's going to be out for, it would have, he would have been out, um, potentially a few weeks here. Yeah, both. You know, I think um, the best thing about being competitive is um, it starts in practice. You know, puck battles in practice, um, one-on-ones competing, um, and then it carries over into games. And the game is the game is at a great place right now, in my opinion. The National Hockey League. I'll say this is talented as I've ever seen across the board. Um, the speed, the skill, and people talk about which they should be, but it's also extremely competitive. So you have to have that, that willingness to compete and then the skill comes out. And I think sometimes this year, what I saw was we're going to show how skilled we are. And that was the lead. And I just think we had it sometimes out of order. Like let's compete first and then let's let your talents go from there. And so the answer is it's both. It's the players making that choice and it's the coach and the coaching staff being on that every day, every single day. And knowing it's a long season and I understand sometimes you can really, really push guys and sometimes you have to pull back, but that's feel. That's, that's what I'm talking about. I'm an experienced coach in terms of, you know, what I'm looking for is someone that has that, all the data is great. All the science is great, but sometimes you have to have that feel too, um, and that's something that I think is is important. Let's speak to the standard you're talking about. Yep, Kevin. I'm, I'm thinking back to last year and came so close to the playoffs, and there was a I don't know. At least outwardly, I got a sense that there was kind of a we've arrived as a playoff team type vibe that was coming out of that that room, at least to me. Yeah. Um, we got to earn it. Does, does your messaging change based on that hindsight? Oh, uh, I don't know. I certainly, I, I don't, we should have never had any sort of arrogance coming out of our locker room. We haven't done anything. We haven't, we haven't made the playoffs. We haven't, we haven't put ourselves in a position. We haven't earned the respect in the league yet. So the reality is too, that 31 teams are disappointed at the end of the year, right? There's one team that feels really good. And but there's 16 teams that are even feel worse than the other 15 teams. We haven't earned it. We got to earn it. And like th this league doesn't give you anything. The game doesn't give you anything. You have to respect the game. You have to respect the league. And that's what I'm talking about. The mindset of walking in in the morning and it's time to go to work. And then loving that time with your teammates and appreciating that time and being on the plane together and all these things you get to do together. But when it's time to work, it's time to work. And that's something that um, our group, I, I saw going through that maturation process this year, um, and that needs to be continued. But, it, and it sounds so simple, but it's, it's just about earning it, period. You know, when you go over your players this summer, how do you sit down and think to yourself, okay, do I have a 47 goal score or do I have a 29 goal score? 
friend Dylan, do I have a 31 goal score or do I have an 18? And we can go through that. Yep. How do you make that determination as you sit down and think about your players? Themselves? Yeah, it's a great question, Paul. I think um, some of it you have to look, you have to look at where players were um, health wise at times, you know, you're not going to make any excuses for anybody and, and injuries are part of the game, unfortunately. And they're also, every team deals with it, but a guy like Tage really battled the first half of the season. A lot of things that in, there was a lot of nights he's playing and wasn't himself. So that plays a role in it. And then he did get healthier in the last half, you know, kind of whatever the last 30 games. And you saw the production look a lot more like the 47 goal scorer and you know, that we expect. So you take that, um, and then I think the other thing, you know, I like to do is kind of look at the process of their game. So take Dylan Cousins. Um, if he plays the game the right way, meaning um, good on both sides of the puck, competing hard, um, fast, power forward mentality, get to the net, the, the, the offensive production will be a byproduct of that and not reversing the order of saying, I'm going to go score 30 and, you know, doing it a different way. So that's what I look at. Um, and I think at times, you know, with, with Dylan in particular, last night he looked like the exact guy I'm talking about. And there were other nights where I just thought, you know, he's not playing to his identity. And I talked to Dylan sometimes this season about, at the end of the game, the other center that you've been going against, especially at home when you're matched up against another team's top line, has to be like, this was miserable. <laughs> That was a miserable night going against 24 all game. Um, and that's the reputation that you want to have in this league. And to me, Dylan's role is a little different where he could score 25, but he helps us win more games because he's first penalty kill. He's taking the big face offs. He, he's going to be out there at the end of the game, um, maybe block a shot that doesn't show up on the offensive side, but it just helped us win a hockey game. So some of it too is our players maturing to understand that the role they play um, ultimately is about winning. And um, I think that's a step that, that we'll talk about this summer as well. How wide of a net do you think you'll cast in the search, knowing that you're, you have a specific skill set, but how many roughly guys do you think you'll have? I don't want to put a number on it, Matt, but I, I think um, I have very specific um, thoughts on this. And if there's a number of people that check the box, um, great, and the conversations will be had. But um, I'm not compromising on what I think our team needs, and I'm going to be relentless on this. Well, I don't, you know, it can't have. I don't know. Um, you know, there's, if you mean they're coaches on other teams, but um, I don't know. I'm, I'm not worried about it. I'm going to get the right one. Always, you know, always looking for talent, always looking for, um, it, this is about the time um, where we'll sit down and have conversations and really go over our, you know, org, org chart and structure and, where do we ask ownership to put more resources or where do we need maybe less resources? So um, I, I want talented people around me. I want people that challenge me. I think I'm extremely lucky uh, right now to have really good people um, with, you know, Jason Kamanos and Mark Jakubowski and Jeremiah Crow on the pro side and, you know, Jerry Fortin on the amateur side and then Sam Ventura on the analytics. Like I do think we're in a, we're well positioned from a hockey ops, um, but, yeah, absolutely open to adding. And if we think there's a there's a reason to add, we will. Awkward to ask this question, given that Rochester still has a playoff run ahead of them. But with where Seth is at and what he's accomplished there, I'm sure other teams are probably going to call him this summer where the opportunities with wanting NHL experience as in your head coach, is it possible that you talk to Seth about an opportunity with the NHL staff? How do you, I guess, plan to proceed um, when it comes to him? Yeah, I mean, I, I think very, very highly of Seth Appert. Um, you know, when I hired him, was it four years ago now? Um, I told him, I think, I think maybe the hardest job in professional hockey is the AHL head coach job. It just is because you're, 
you're developing players, um, you're trying to win, you're dealing with younger players that have the ups and downs. Uh, he's done a phenomenal job. He's got a bright future. Um, my biggest thing with Seth right now is um, I want him to be completely focused and locked in on Rochester. Um, you know, they have three games left here, which are critical games, and then they have, I truly believe, an opportunity to do something special in the playoffs with the talent they have in the roster, and I also know how much that'll help our, our guys. So, um, but, you know, big, big believer in Seth Afford. You know, just to close the loop on the timeline, you know, you had referenced before you, you started the year saying the window is open, and it's safe to say it doesn't seem like at that point it felt playoffs or bust, but was it just once you felt things were repetitively underperforming that you knew a change would come? Yeah, uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to understand exactly the question. Like if you're asking about, you know, did we make a coaching change? Cause we didn't make the playoffs. Is that what you mean? Like playoffs or bust? Um, yeah, like it's part of it. I believe our team underperformed this year. I think we, we have a talent, um, that we could be a playoff team. And that's not just on Donnie and the coaches. That's on me. Like I said, our players, um, we're all accountable for that. Um, but it's bigger than that. You know, there's a lot of things you, you, you think about and you factor in when you make big decisions. Um, and it's, it's for me really looking at the, the process and the intricacies of certain things. And then it's, it's basically for me, um, thinking about how do we take the next step and, um, what do we need? What does that voice need to be? And I just felt this was the right time to make the change. What happened with Luka Pekka around, and he kind of became the starter in late November, then he got to Sewell. But what happened to him in November, January that led to his ascension, I guess? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think this was, a, this was coming. You know, I, I, I know I, I've said this, I believed it. Um, that we were in a position of strength in the goaltending. I said it a year ago because I truly believed that we had you know, two young goaltenders that were, you know, really kind of coming. And you don't know exactly what the timing of that is. Um, but I think the work that he did over the, last, the previous couple of years, the work he did in the off season when he, when he was healthy, you know, it took him a couple of years there of dealing with injuries and then rehabbing in the summer. But when he was able to really lock in and, and put the work in, um, and then you saw the work on the ice and you just saw his game maturing. Um, and I, and I love the fact that he, what you don't know about the next part is the mindset, you know, like he wanted the net and he, he had an opportunity and he, he ran with it and it was, it was great to see. And I love the confidence that he gave our team. You know, I think all, I don't the majority, almost all the games he played this year, he gave us a chance to win. And that's really at the end of the day, what you're, what you're looking for out of your goaltender. Well, you want a seasoned guy, or it seemed like this, this club was a seasoned experience. Is, is, what's the budget like? I mean, are those top guys available in a, for a team like this, budget-wise? Like I can, I can only tell you that um, there's never been a time that I haven't been given every resource that we need here to win, period. And this isn't going to change this time. I'm not going to get into names. I think it's that's it's a challenge to do that and unfair. I just I think it, what you need to know is that um, you guys can, as I walk out of here, know I have a plan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.